Okay, so we'll do a little bit of editing to this roof. Once you've created a roof, you can always get back into sketch mode um, just by selecting the roof. You can either do this from floor plan um, like we were doing before, or I'll just go up to edit footprint there. I'll just show you how you can also edit it um, in 3D. It sort of just works the same. Um, so this roof here, if um, if I was to select any one of these lines, and at the moment you can see by the little triangle marks on each line, that each one of those lines is defining a roof slope, which slopes up perpendicular away from that line. If I select, say, this line here, and uncheck define slope up the top here, so that's now no longer going to define a slope, so the roof won't slope from that line up away. And you'll see the effect of that when I click tick. There is no slope on that edge now. The slope only comes from this other edge in there. So we've created a gable um, very easily by just controlling which lines define the slope. Pretty easy. So I'll go back into edit footprint there again. And I'll redefine, make that define a slope again. And it's just going to do the same. Go back to where we were before. If I hit the tick, we're back to the roof that we had before. So let's do something a little bit more combined than that. Um, I could um, just draw some lines now. I might delete that particular line there. And I might just draw lines using the line tool from that point. And I'll go at an angle of 45 degrees. Oh, as I do this, I'm going to go back to drawing lines. I don't want these lines to define a slope. So if I just come back at 45 degrees from there, and if I just go here at 45 degrees and trim those lines up using the trim tool, normal trim command up here. So none of these lines here is defining a slope. The slope's still just going to come from this side and that side and up until it reaches a ridge in the middle. These lines here are only just going to find, define the end plan shape. So when I hit tick there, I get that end roof panel with just that, um, with that hip end missing because that was the shape that I created. So if I go back to edit the footprint again down here, and I'm just going to try some other little techniques, like if I go from the midpoint of there, once again, this line's not defining a slope. And if I find the midpoint of that line, and then trim the shape. So we're creating that sort of shape on the end at 45 degrees. And quick tick. So what we've created there is another little um, roof, roof shape. So this is going to be the start of a Dutch gable. Um, and we've just got this end hip of the Dutch gable missing. So to finish the story there, to finish that little bit of a roof, let's go and put another another piece of roof on. I'll create a new roof using the roof command. Okay, now I think I'll do this from roof level one. We're in roof level one here. I'll, I'll put a cross that off. And while I'm in roof level one to get the levels right, that's where I'll put the new roof command in. Now, if I just use the pick lines tool off here, this and I can give it the offset of 600 to create this shape. That is just going to create a line for me where the bottom edge of the roof out at the eaves will be in line with whatever the roof level is. And at the moment, my roof level is on that particular level with an offset from that level of zero. So if I go back to pick walls with an offset of 600 and make this define the slope and pick this wall just the same as I picked uh, when I originally drew the first part of the roof. I'm thinking I should get everything now going at the right level. So if I pick that line there and change this whole roof shape to 25 degrees. So everything is at 25 degrees there now. And if I now just go back to pick lines, and I'm not going to define a slope here, and I'm just on the pick lines tool with no slope being defined, 
I could pick this shape to fill in this shape here now. Trim those lines up so I've got a nice, neat, tidy um, trim sketch. I'm thinking that'll give me the right levels, but uh, let's give it a go. So I'll click the tick mode and have a look at it in 3D, and that's what I created there. I'll just go back to edit that footprint. So there was the footprint we edited. It's all about giving due consideration to the height of the eaves as you draw the eaves to get them to match up at the right level. If you use the pick wall tool, the eaves will be calculated as if the bottoms of the roof rafters are pitching from the uh, load bearing wall. Click that tick to support out there and that gives the right result for a Dutch gable up in there. So you can see that technique could be developed even further, like um, uh, you won't like the, you probably won't like the look of what I'm about to do, but just to show you that the techniques can be applied, if I edit that roof shape there and edit the footprint, I could delete that line there. Uh, yep, delete that line there, and I might just give myself a bit of a guideline. This line I'll get rid of in a second. I'm just going to give myself another guideline for halfway between there. And now I'm going to draw some lines that I will use. Now they're not defining a slope. I'll go from that end point to that midpoint to that end point to that end point and get rid of that. So now I've got a plan view shape of the roof like that. None of these lines are defining the slope. The slope is just being defined from these two side lines. So when I tick finish, I've got a flying Dutch gable, I guess you call them, on where the, uh, the ridge line over the uh, gable extends out a little bit further. Okay, now we could um, play with that a little bit further. Uh, I'll just leave it like that for the moment. Yeah, okay, now we might do something a little bit here with this edge, a little bit like this. Now, imagine there was going to be a veranda over this shape through here, and we want to extend that roof line out. Now, these were fairly high walls. They were three metre high walls. So on a veranda, you could probably ex ex um, uh, cope with the wall pitching down over the veranda until it got a little bit lower. So I'm going to try and see what it looks like if this roof was to pitch out further um, to cover a veranda on that point. So if I edit the footprint there, before I do that, no, I think I'll, sorry, I'd better take you down another path to show you something else that might happen. Um, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll treat, I'll do this, this one out through here. So if I edit the footprint there, now let's imagine I had a little bit of veranda across this front area out through here. If I was to simply grab that line and change that overhang now to, I don't know, 2400, something like that. I've got an overhang of 2400. Remember, this line was drawn by picking on the wall, so it's going to be pitched from that wall and then pitching down um, at the more it overhangs. The more it overhangs, the further it's going to pitch down. So if I click tick there, we'll get that effect because the line was drawn attached to the wall using the pick wall command. So that set up the springing point of the roof at the wall edge. And then it just allowed that roof shape to extend down further. So if that wasn't the, what you wanted, if you actually wanted the whole hip roof to be extended out further, there's a solution to, to do that as you, as you change and edit things. So I'm going to go back into the edit footprint, bring the edit footprint back up again. And um, if we then go to uh, align the eaves, okay, if I click on this Align Eaves button, what it will be, because before what happened was the, these eaves here were at the one alignment, but this eave was dropping down as the overhang got further. Well, Revit lets you fix that up if you want all the eaves online, 
and by using the align eaves tool and it gives you a bit of a readout then if you actually care to zoom in on this this eave now is has got a fall of negative 100 uh, 1119 whereas all these other eaves are negative 280 negative 280 and negative 280 for all those other eaves this eave because of its extra overhang now is dropping down further and has got a, a, a further drop so you can align the eaves now you can align the eaves one of two ways you can adjust the overhang that's not what we want to do in this case so that would readjust the overhang back uh, and align the eaves what we want to do is adjust the height so we want to um, adjust the height of the eaves to bring it back in line with these other eaves so to do that it's like the normal align command in Revit you click on one of the lines that's at the right height first and then you click on the line you want to align it to and as you can see now minus 280 and this one's minus 280 as well so if I click the tick what that's done is move the whole hip further out as opposed to as opposed to that effect out there so depending on what roof shape you wanted to I'm just going to set this one back and realign the eaves again just so you see it done again align the eaves click on the one that's at the right height then click on the eave that you want to bring up to that height ah I just adjusted the overhang Control Z align eaves I want to adjust the height and leave the overhang the same so we click like that and then we can click the tick tool so that's a little bit on aligning eaves and you should have a clear understanding now of the difference between picking a wall to set the pitching of the roof or just drawing the roof freehand. So I'll stop the video there and then we'll come back and do a little bit more editing in a sec.